Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and in a previous video, we talked about using one of these. This is a Bosch style cube relay, really commonly seen in cars. So if I've got a microcontroller and I need to control some sort of, uh, you know, power to something in a car, this would be something that, you know, would be the first thing that I would uh, think about going with. Relays aren't always the best option for a variety of reasons, and we'll talk about that. But if we want to use something else, what can we use? Today, we're going to look at using a field effect transistor, basically a FET. So let's take a look at how this would work for uh, controlling something like a fan. Relays tend to be a mainstay of power delivery in a car, especially for high current applications. So your uh, electric fan, things like that, headlights, you see these a lot. They're really nice because they're not affected too much by noise. They can deliver a lot of current and they're pretty simple. The downsides though are they're mechanical, so they wear out. They are actually noisy. They make a noise. Sometimes you don't want to hear the clicking and really they're just fairly large, right? Sometimes you want something a little bit smaller and that type of an application will replace that with a transistor. Specifically, this is a field effect transistor and more specifically, this one is an N-channel transistor. That's all we're going to be talking about today. I'll do another video. We'll cover P-channel. They work a little bit differently and they're used differently. The important thing to understand about an N-channel transistor for a switch is it needs to be used on the low side. So this switches to ground. And the way I remember this is N for negative. This switches the negative side. So the load needs to be on the positive side. So basically, if we have Let's say we have a fan, right? We're using our fan here and we want to control it. We would have to give 12 volts here and then our transistor is here to ground. This is called low side switching. And an N channel will work for this. If you wanted to switch up here, you can't use an N channel. You'd have to use a P channel. And again, we'll cover that in a different video, but this is what we're uh, working on here. So if you've got something that you need to control a load and you have access to the ground, you don't always have that, but if you've got access to be able to switch the ground, this is the way to go because they're much easier to put in. There's less circuitry. They're less expensive. They can uh, flow more current. They've got a lot of advantages over the P-channel. The downside again is an end channel can't switch up here on the high side and sometimes you have to have that so let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail of how you would wire this up to switch this and how it all works on this one i'm using this irfz 44n this is a pretty common part number and you can see here it'll sync up to 49 amps and can run at 55 volts. So this is fantastic for an automotive application. We're never going to exceed 55 volts and we're probably not going to exceed 49 amps. If you're uh, going over 49 amps for something, that's when you really want to look at using a relay. The symbol for a transistor on a schematic is fairly straightforward. It will usually look something like this. And then it has three legs on it, as you saw here, and they'll be marked S for source, D for drain, and G for gate. Now how do these and these equate to these pins? On this style, so the, the square looking thing with three legs, if we have our part, looking at it from the front, we've got three legs, it is gate, drain, source. So first pin is gate, second pin is drain, third pin is source. Wiring these in is super easy. This gate, this is what we're going to control it with from our microcontroller. You should put in a resistor here, say 1K, somewhere in that range, and that will limit current through this and this will hook to our digital output. So that simply limits the amount of current flowing through here, helps protect your microcontroller from overcurrent and you know burning out your digital output. The source, 
This is really easy. We just hook that direct to ground. Now, because when you power up, this might be in an unknown state, a floating state, what we want to do is we want to make sure that when this is not active, this is low. So we'll hook a pull down resistor to this and we'll just connect it to ground as well. Somewhere around 47K is, is good. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere around 50K is a, is a good pull down for this. So this is in normal situation and be pulled down. So this is going to be inactive and this is open. So this is acting like an open circuit to a relay. That's all there is to it. And then when we power this, when we energize this from our output, and this can be 3.3 or 5 volts, it's going to activate this transistor, which is going to close this and allow current to flow through it. So then all we have to do is take this, hook this up to whatever we're trying to control, our load, and then run that to our 12 volt system. So basically 12 volt goes through whatever we're trying to control, our fan, our lights, whatever. We'll uh, do this with a fan just here on the desktop as an example, but then it goes into the drain and then outsource to ground. That's all there is to it. So basically a couple of resistors and the transistor. That's all we need. Let's go wire this up on a breadboard and control something so we can see how it works. Here is a very simple breadboarded application for this. We've got our microcontroller. In this case, we're using an Arduino Nano, but really you could use any kind of a microcontroller here. Over here is a power supply. This is just taking our automotive voltage, 12 to 14 in here, giving us five out. That's providing power for our microcontroller. And I'll put a link up here to what I've done over on this to make it a little bit more friendly for an automotive application. But really, our switch logic is right here. I've added in an LED just to give us some visual representation of when it's on and off and the fan. But here's our transistor and our two resistors. So this is the gate resistor, comes through the green over to our output, and this one goes to ground. Here's my Arduino sketch. Basically, I'm going to be driving on pin three for our output. So we're going to set it up as an output here in setup. It's going to turn on and off, toggling it. And when I turn it off, I go for five seconds and it's only on for 1500 milliseconds. The reason for that is once I turn it on, the fan runs for quite a while as it coasts. So if we take a look at it on the bench, as soon as I turn on the power supply, the Arduino will power up and start running. And you can see the fan comes on and then shuts off. And you can see right here, it's a little bit easier to see when it's on and off. So there it's on and then back off. This is deceptively simple, right? We've just got our FET and two resistors. But again, this thing can sync up to 49 amps of current here. It is worth noting that these things can get pretty warm, especially if they're sinking a lot of current. That's why it's got this big metal thing here. This can be attached to a heat sink. So we've got that tab. You want to screw it to something. And in fact, the kit that I have here came with these heat sinks. So that just goes right in there. You can screw that in and that provides a nice heat sink to cool it off. So if you're thinking about using something other than a relay in your automotive application, maybe the relay is too big, maybe you want to save cost, maybe you want to have it in a smaller space, whatever. Going with a FET is an easy, cheap alternative as long as you have control over reaching the ground. So if you can switch the ground for it. Again, not always an option, especially in automotive applications. We'll cover an application where you can't do that in the next video, but if you can, this is an excellent option for controlling high current loads. Thanks for watching.